your presence just come down and fill the place. In the name of Jesus, as we worship, we ask that you just come down and bless us. Lord, bless everyone who's watching online. Bless everyone who's in this service. Lord, anoint the preaching, anoint the singing. In Jesus' name, we come to worship you. And we welcome your presence in your name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Song leader. Who's the song leader?
Thank you.
house of the Lord. Amen. Before we take up the time of the offers, I wonder if somebody uh, needs prayer today. In the body, somebody sick, not feeling too good. Anybody? I know I'm not. <laughs> Sister Ann, why don't you come forward? kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be as it added unto you. Added unto you. Thank you. Yes. You shot right out of my head. The enemies attack. You can feel this. You can feel the battle going on right now in the spirit. Yes. I've been feeling it ever since I got up here. Ever since I woke up this morning. We've got to have a breakthrough. God's going to be victorious. And the way that he's victorious is when we're, when we are, when we're faithful to God. God will be faithful to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You hold back. Hold back. God says, I'm going to hold back. Until you have enough faith to walk in faith. Amen. Lord, we pray for a blessing of those who are faithful today. Those who want to give to the kingdom of God. Who are not holding back nothing from the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those who are short-handed, we pray for faith to rise up into those people, Lord God. God, give me faith, Father. I need faith in us, Lord God. To do the things, God, that you're calling all of us to do here in the last days. We, we've got to walk with our eyes open and, and be alert. And we're so thankful, God, that you love us. And bless this. Bless this offering. Bless this time. Let us give to the kingdom of God so the kingdom can be multiplied. In your name can be spread throughout this year in Jesus' name. Amen.
going to be happy out there. If you've had the Holy Ghost, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, if you felt the release of that sin and that joy, you are never, ever, ever going to be happy out there. You're going to be walking on a fence and you're going to be miserable every day. Because you've got God here saying, please don't do that, honey. Please. And you've got the devil. Oh, that's fun. Sin is fun. Well, the Bible does say sin is fun. What? For a season. For a season. The devil gets you with all that fun. You get out there and you have fun. And oh, and oh. And then before long, you've lost that peace and joy of God. And you don't understand why you're miserable. After all, you're going out and having fun. And a drunk is no replacement for the Holy Ghost. A high is no replacement for the Holy Ghost. Most miserable. Tell me if I'm not telling you the truth. You can never be condemned for your sin. Never. Why? Because God condemned the very thing that could condemn you. He paid a price 2,000 years ago. He took every sin of the world upon himself. And he shed his blood and he covered it. So you can't be condemned for it. Amen. Listen to my voice. That doesn't give you the excuse to go out and sin and sin and sin. Oh, I'm not going to be condemned. I'll just have to ask God to forgive me. No, before long, you lost your joy, your peace, your Holy Ghost. You're miserable, and you don't know why. You know the story of the five foolish virgins? They had the oil. It was full at one time. But for some reason, they let life seep out their oil. So when the bridegroom came, they didn't have any oil. And they had to run to the store and they missed the bridegroom. The oil is the Holy Ghost. You have to pray. You have to read your Bible. You have to keep it up. You have to keep it up. And the strength to help you keep it up is coming to church. There's a reason God said forsake not the assembly of yourself together and even more so when you see the time approaching. What time? The end of the world. Hebrew 10.25 Because there's strength. There's strength when you come in and you worship the power and the power of God comes down and you feel it. Then you're able to pray through. Sometimes you can't pray through at home. I mean, you pray and it's like there's a wall or right. yeah. Yeah. iron ceiling there. And you're saying, God, where are you? Uh -huh. But when you come into church and there's worship and the power of God is flowing, it's easy to raise your hands and tap into it. Yes, amen. Right? Worship with your whole heart when you come in here. Worship like you're the only one worshiping and you're going to feel the power of God. And you can pray through right in some service. You don't have to come up here. If you're worshiping and the power of God comes down and you start crying, go for it. Let it go. Let it go. Run to the altar if you have to. We'll yes. pray for you. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. John 3, 17. For God did not send his son, and I'm saying it in my own words, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to bring harm to the nation. Sometimes we think of God up there with this great big old stick with the head on. Waiting for us to sin so he can pound us. Waiting for us to come to church so the preacher can put us down under his thumb or her thumb and, and preach us into the altar. No, we shouldn't have to preach you into the altar. You shouldn't want to come down and worship the Lord. I shouldn't have to get out the whip and go down, oh, psh, get to the altar, psh, get to the altar, start worshiping. I shouldn't have to. Our hearts should want to worship Jesus. We should come here with hunger. We should want 
everything God wants for us. And the only way to get it is to worship. If we're sitting on the pew, we're not going to leave here. We're not going to have a thing. Nothing. We're not going to feel a thing. Because God wants us to worship. God told the apostles once, they was telling all the people to be quiet. They were waving palm branches. Hosanna, I said it to the king. And the, the apostles said, quiet down. They're making too much noise. And God said, I love their worship with my own words. If they were quiet, I'd have the rocks worship me. I'd have the rocks cry out. He wants to hear your worship. He inhabits the praises of his people. We gotta use our mouth. We gotta talk to him like our friend. Jesus, forgive me of my sins, God. I am so sorry. Forgive me for what I've done that I know is a sin. And what I've done that I don't know is a sin. Forgive it all. I give you myself. Then raise your hands and just start worshiping. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. You are so awesome. And as you do, the tears are gonna start flowing. You're going to start feeling the power of God. And you keep worshiping. And as you worship, all of a sudden your mouth is going to go. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to have a hard time getting out the English. And you're not doing it, by the way. I'm not going to tell you to say, tie my bow tie five times. See, your words are dropping. And you have the Holy Ghost. That's not the Holy Ghost. You surrender all. God will come down. He will take over that mouth. It will come out as jumble. You won't understand it. It's a heavenly language. God does. Right. Right. And with it comes peace, joy, love, happiness. That's what comes with it. Real. And to keep it, you read your Bible and you pray through every day. Oh, you don't have to pray 19 hours to keep it. No. Get up in the morning. Read a couple of scriptures, have your cup of coffee, have your little devotion, go your day, and as things happen, the Bible says pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean you have to speak in tongues all day. It just means as your day goes, I'll say, oh, wow, Lord, what a beautiful sunset. Thank you for giving me that sunset. I'll be going along. Oh, wow, God, thank you for doing that for me. I just talked to him all day long. What is prayer? It's talking to Jesus. Yes. He becomes your dearest and best friend. Believe me, he does. When I went through my divorce and I was so sad, I couldn't get out of bed. He came in and physically I felt him put his arms around me. And he was there and he was a comfort. He sent angels to wake me up when I was in mortal danger when they were coming to Get me and my daughter to kill me, didn't he? He woke me right up. Stopped at a rest area because I couldn't stay awake on a trip and I had no money for a hotel. And he put an angel bed next to us. I saw the angel. They didn't. I thought it was a policeman. They said, oh, Mom, there's been nothing there all night. But I saw, every time I woke up, I saw that chief with the policeman with the smoky bandit hat. That's all I can say. <laughs> had a smoky bandit hat and he put it over his face, and he laid his seat back, and I knew, I knew he was going to protect me. I thought it was a policeman. But when I turned to the kids and said, look at the policeman, and I looked back, it was gone. No car started, nothing. So guess what? God sent an angel. He would do that for you. He would do that for any of you. He didn't die just for me. He didn't shed his blood just for me. And the Holy Ghost is not just for me. Praise God. Luke 131, I didn't give that to him. But the Bible says his name was going to be Jesus. His name meant Savior in Hebrew. His name was not judge or lawgiver, but it was Savior. He chose to come as our Savior. Romans 5, 12, 14 through 21 says, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all of sin. That was Adam. 
Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, because we were all born in sin. After the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? So Adam was a representation of Jesus. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many is dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded to many. So one man brought sin, Adam. And one man died, took on the sin of the world, because he was in flesh, he died. He had blood. He was half God because God was his father. And he looked at it and said, uh, the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and she had a son. So the flesh part came from Mary. The God part came from, G from, from God, from Jesus. Because he said he came in his father's name. His blood, his blood covers all. If you want a Bible study on that, we can give you a Bible study so you can understand it more. God today wants to give you a gift of no condemnation. This was written by Joseph Prince, by the way, but I thought it was so good. The gift will cause you to walk tall, be a true success. The gift will also save you from a life of stress, fear, restlessness, <laughs> even sickness and disease. That is because everything that happens in your soul, the emotional and mental realms, will affect your physical body if it is not properly dealt with. Doctors are beginning to realize that more people are suffering from psychosomatic illnesses nowadays. They are realizing that the majority of patients would not be suffering from their physical conditions if they had known how to handle the emotional afflictions such as fear, stress, and worry. Think about that. We bring a lot of sickness on ourselves from stress and worry. And the Bible does say in the last days, men's heart would fail them for fear. And we're in the last days, whether you recognize it or not. All you have to yeah. do is Amen. see yeah. the many earthquakes, yeah. <laughs> the volcanoes that's erupting all over the world, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> lava coming out of the ground, a place that there wasn't. And all the Bible right. does say, yeah. hell shall enlarge itself. Why? Because there's many people who don't want to serve God. They think they can do it on their own. They're their own little gods. Well, bless your little heart. If you want to be your own little god, go ahead and be one. I prefer to serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the most high God, the only God, the Lord of Jesus. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. John 8, 1 through 12, I don't think I'm going to read it all. But you can read it. That is the woman that was brought to Jesus when she committed adultery. And the Sadducees and Pharisees was trying to catch Jesus. Because the law said if you were caught in sin, you were stoned. And so they wanted to see what Jesus would do. Because Jesus was having compassion on people and healing people. So what did God do? He said, you, who are without sin, cast the first stone. And he got down and started writing. I don't know what he wrote in the dirt. He did write with his finger the Ten Commandments. Maybe he was saying, thou shalt not kill. Who knows? I don't know. I wasn't there. But everybody dropped the rocks and left. And then Jesus looked at her and said, where are your condemners? She said, I have none, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn. Go and sin no more. Oh, you're not under condemnation. Go, sin no more. Don't do it again. You'll be fine. Amen. Because when we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sin, we should not go pick it back up because we know we can go and ask the Lord to forgive us again. That's kind of silly, isn't it? He might 
He might, you know, the Bible says he only strives with man for a little bit of time. Do you know where that's found, Brother Hutchins? He only strives with, with man for a while. And then he says, okay, I'm done. And he moves on. Oh, he does? Well, I think he's a lot more merciful and graceful than I am because I probably would move along from people within a month. God's grace is unending. And if we have a heart for God, he's going to keep striving with us. But when we take him casual, we just think he's there just, you know, like a spoiled rat. He couldn't lift his spirit. I have known that to happen. He did my mother for a whole year. And then she was so repentant, he never start feeling him again. That's just the way it is. If you're in that position, if you come to church and you don't feel the presence of God anymore, I would be one of the first ones down here. I would be telling God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Let me feel your presence again. Give me grace and mercy. And he will do so. It's merely a matter of asking. It's Romans 14, 17 says. It's Genesis 6, 3. It's Genesis 6, 3 is where that scripture is if you want to look it up. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what? Righteousness, Righteousness and what? Peace, Peace yep. and joy in the what? Holy oh, no. Romans 15, 13, I'm getting ready to close this down. Says, For the kingdom of... Oh, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that she may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And I'm going to close with these scriptures about the Holy Ghost. Just so everybody knows what I'm talking about. Acts 2, 1 through 6. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to what? Speak, with other, tongues. Speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of under uh, every nation under heaven. Devout. That means they went to church. All the time and did what they were supposed to. They were devout. Now when this was noise and broad enough to come together and they were confounded because they heard every man speak in his own language. You know, people in foreign country have heard people get the Holy Ghost in English. He gives you another tongue that you do not know. Go down to 12. Peter preached the first sermon. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean is this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven, he stood up with all of the apostles, disciples, that means they agreed with him. Uh, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose. When you get the Holy Ghost, sometimes you act crazy. You might cry. You might jump up and down. You might run. You might try to drown yourself when you get baptized. <laughs> I'm teasing, Sister Autumn. But you absolutely do something. <laughs> So they're not drunk, as you suppose. It's only 11 o'clock. Or 9. Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose. See, it is but the third hour of the day, 9. But this is that which was spoken by the trumpet Joel over three, was it 300 years ago? 400 years ago at that time. The prophet Joah prophesied it, and he quotes it. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
Your young men shall see, see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. And on my hand servants, my handmaidens that were born in those days of my spirit, and they shall cross. Down to 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that name, same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Sometimes people just leave it there. <laughs> Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as the means of Lord our God shall call. And with many words did he testify and exhort and was preaching, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Look at 41. Then they that gladly received his words were baptized, and the same day were added unto them 3,000 souls. So on the first day, 3,120 were filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized. That throws away the lie that the Holy Ghost was only for the 12 apostles. And there was more. If you keep reading, if you keep reading, you're going to find Cornelius and his whole household with the Holy Ghost. You're going to find uh, people or um, apostles of John, and they're asked, have you received the Holy Ghost since you've been baptized? And they say no. And then you're also going to see the Samaritans get the Holy Ghost. All in the book of Acts. I do not see anywhere where anybody was saved without being baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. And I submit to you today, it is for you as well. Amen. Do you want peace, joy, and happiness? Do you want forgiveness for your sins? Do you want, and I'm getting ready to close, I don't know where the piano player is, but do you want God? Do you want this? If you do, the altar is open. Please stand. I'm closing with that. The altar is open. This is what Jesus died to give us. He died to give us this. And we resist, and we don't want it. And we're throwing away our peace, joy, and happiness. Because there really is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. There really is freedom in God.